everyone, welcome to the Christmas series. Please do not mind my voice. I don't know what's going on. I'm really not sick. I think it's just the weather changing and you know the dryness in the air and all that jazz. But anywho, just please overlook it. I am putting together this classic heirloom Christmas dress for my youngest daughter in one week. Yes, that is right. One week while filming and I am going to share the process with you so you can do the same. We begin in my sewing room, pulling out the pattern and trying to figure out what's going on. My kiddos are all at school these days, provided that someone isn't sick or what have you. So I'm entering into this focus, my time zone. And this style of thinking makes the best use of time. While I don't want to be stressed on how I spend every single second of this kid-free block of time, I do want to use my morning efficiently. So notice there's no phone around. Well, I mean, there is one if there's school calls, but otherwise there's no social media, no random texting, no, you know, answering emails. The phone is just there in case of school, one of their school calls. I also only have water or coffee to distract me. This is not the time for snacking. You're entering into like this sort of tunnel, sort of your space, your time. It is precious sacred turn off the rest of the world right you're into entering into sewing time it is time to do all the things that bring you joy so for me that's things like lighting a candle or turning on the diffuser opening a window it has become fall here and my voice has taken a beating to this crisp fresh air but my goodness i love it it's just been a lovely transition for my voice this year Anywho, like I said, we're entering fall season here in the Smoky Mountains and I am all about that fresh mountain air. It is delicious. I try to keep my tiny sewing space as well organized as I can and at the moment it's fairly clean, but if it needed tidying up, I would do that before sewing. Clean space, clean mind. Now that the stage is set for a productive sewing session, I am hunting down those pattern pieces that I need. I've heard from many that get overwhelmed at this stage in the game, but something that helps me here is to remind myself that everything here is finite. It might seem like there's endless amounts to cut out, but remind yourself that there's only, you know, five, eight, twelve pieces, what have you, and that you're going to tackle them one at a time until they're done. Focusing on one piece at a time instead of the entire, you know, twelve pieces or so may be a better mindset to have if this part is overwhelming to you. I will say cutting out is not my favorite, especially in a tiny sewing space without a cutting table, but that's okay. One piece at a time until they're all done, we can do. And while there are many ways to slice a cake, I first decide to pleat up the front of my skirt in preparations for smocking. So I give that a good ironing and roll it up on my dowel. I like a dowel that's thicker in diameter, just it's easier to hold and all of that jazz. So while you're rolling up, you don't need to worry about keeping things super tight, nor do you need to stress about having the raw edge in line with itself. You've got about half an inch or so of tolerance to work with since you can kind of maneuver things, you know, as the fabric goes through the pleater. 
So place however many needles you like for your size and design and then carefully pleat up your fabric. More often than not, I leave the selvage edges on my fabric. I know I'm a, I'm a rebel over here. And most of the time they go through the pleater just fine. Sometimes though, they need a little bit of rocking and in this case, I found that to be helpful. It's just a little trick that you can do. So if you feel like resistance building, you can just rock it back and forth ever so gently and make sure those needles are empty first. But if you do feel resistance with empty pleating needles, then try gently rocking back and forth. It kind of eases those holes open and the needles into place without them breaking. Daylight. Do you guys see this? It is 8 in the morning, a little after 8. Hold on. My light source. Come on. Don't be like this. And we are going to see how much we can get done today. I am so excited for this. It is fall. I got my fall socks on. Some comfy fall socks, comfy fall sweater. We're feeling it. I love the season of fall. It is my favorite season. Get our iron on. So yesterday we got Sweet Everly's um, outfit, her her dress cut out, and we got the parts mocked. So we're just gonna go through and just see how much I can get done today in in the next three or four hours until lunchtime. I am gonna stop jibber jabbering to the camera because that eats up my time. But I will record what I'm doing and I will voice over it later because that's just the best use of my time. And um, yeah. It's exciting, very exciting. I hope everything is well with everybody in their neck of the woods and you're getting into fall sewing and Christmas sewing and all the things and just enjoying life. Life should be fun, right? Life is supposed to be fun. Let's get going. So to start off the machine sewing, I'm using that bodice ring method that I love oh so much. It is a clean, easy way to finish a bodice. So I've got two bodice fronts as well as two bodice backs cut out on the fold. And I place the fronts across from each other as well as the backs across from each other. You know, front, back, front, back and then join this little ring, if you will, together at the shoulder seams using plain seams. Hold on. And it was at this point that I remembered I was using a good old commercial pattern. So I double checked the seam allowances. Vogue and others normally use a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 5 eighths. Fine. Let's join all those shoulder seams together here. Tis the season, feeling the excitement start. Oh, so much fun. Iron those seams open and then place the front on top of each other. And this will cause the backs to fold in half and you will see the bodice comes right together, completely lined. Isn't that lovely? Onto that collar, I'm going to apply the embroidery design that came with the pattern. So I'm using this heat activated pin. It is linked in my Amazon storefront. I love these things. I have used them for years and I much prefer them over the water soluble ones, but to each their own. I also love this light board screen thing. It's also linked, um, you love that description, light board screen thing. <laughs> it is also linked in my Amazon storefront and this gets into my peaceful, happy place, transferring the designs and dreaming about how I'm gonna stitch them up. Well, I'm all for Christmas All the happy smiles and the wishes 
And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe. Tell me one thing Is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live, the dream I knew. This Christmas, I only want to be close to you. As I said before, clean space, clean mind, so I need to clean off my second machine. My primary machine is an industrial one which only does straight stitches. So I have this little secondary guy to pick up the zigzag and all those lovely heirloom stitches. So for this garment, I'm going to apply the lace on the sleeves in the little diamond shaped outline of the pattern. Should we do 100 or a 90? Decisions, decisions. Ah! Let's go with a 90. Whatever we do, we will be alright. I'm going to let me go. Can you see this? May all your wishes to not come true. Love I live. Microcheck 90. Now I'm using beaded insertion lace, which admittedly had I known this embellishment was on the sleeve when I was ordering my materials, I would have picked the lace that went on, you know, that would match the edging, but it's fine. It's all it's all good and dandy. It's the best choice I had in my sash, so I went with it and I'm thinking it might be kind of a neat thing actually, especially since it'll give me the option of threading some ribbon and tying them to a pretty bow at the sleeves. We'll just see how it comes together, okay? But I, I'm not hating it at this point, is all I'm trying to say. I'm going with the flow, I'm enjoying myself, it's all good. Did you hear something from the chimney? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. So I complete the pin stitching on the other side of the lace, give that an iron in, being careful not to iron off the hand embroidery design. I put all those hand embroidery pieces together and I set them aside. Now I'm turning my focus onto that pleated front skirt. I'm searching through the pattern folder trying to find some pit blocking piece. I either need, okay I need something right, I either need the blocking pattern piece for the skirt or I need the skirt pattern piece. Either piece will give me the bottom of the arm's eye to transfer onto the pleated skirt. And I pull the pleating threads onto either side of the skirt so I have some seam allowance. I tie off the first side in groups of twos or threes. And then I trim those up. I love trimming them up. It is so satisfying getting you know, some of that tidiness back. Maybe I'm just weird, but I'm like, yes, clean it up. Get out of my way. <laughs> so here comes the magic freezer paper. I love this stuff. I've been using it for about five or six years now. And while I have found that it doesn't work in absolutely every situation, there's some weird stuff I've gotten into that doesn't quite work in. It, but overall, it does a wonderful job for the vast majority of situations. So I transfer the arm's eye and width for the skirt front onto the freezer paper onto the mat side. There is a glossy and a mat side. You want to draw on the mat side. I trim that out and finish blocking the pleats. I do this in two steps. The first step is to get the length 
or the width, however you want to, to say that, of the top of the skirt correct first, okay? So you're only focusing on how wide the top of the skirt is, just that length. I pinch off where the second round of knots should go to you know, tie off and secure that length in groups of twos or threes, just like the other side of the skirt. And now the second step is to adjust the pleats. And I find doing this process in a two-step manner makes things so much easier. So once I have my pleats adjusted, then I iron the freezer paper onto my skirt, making sure to iron with the glossy side touching my fabric. So after all of that cools off, I take it to my machine and secure the pleats with some stitching. I wanted to use some piping in that waist seam, so I'm attaching piping here, and those stitches will secure the pleats. But I could have attached the front, you know, the front bodice, just some stitching to go over those pleats. I start at one arm's eye going around those curves over the piping and finish at the other arm's eye. You can do this using a zigzag if you like. I just used a smaller straight stitch and that secured things just fine. Now I'm removing the first of paper, you know, peeling it back on itself. And once the first side's removed, you can just take out the other, the other bit comes right on out and I join the bodice to the pleated skirt. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Every Christmas, honey, yeah. the snowman's dusting off his hat, putting on the show for everybody to give him a smile the last another year. Something that happens with sleigh bells are ringing when December is when the children are singing. Yeah. It's Merry Christmas, baby. Ooh, yeah. There's room at the table for big and for small. All the fire is popping, the chairs not so. Merry Christmas, baby. The snow is laying to feed deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. So it is now 11 o'clock. I don't know. I just, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I don't know. It, I don't know who this person is in front of you. Okay. Um, I have sewn straight since eight, eight this morning. I have Everly stress. I have like the handwork all loaded up and ready to go for a car circle. Am I going to be that person that gets us sew in car circle? It is now fall. So the weather is pretty. And I am just like, this is going to be so much fun just to sit there and sew in car circle. And, um, Usually I come after car circle and I, I do that because I don't want to wait and all that sort of stuff. So, anywho, today I'm going to be just sitting there like a happy little clam and um, doing some handwork and then I'll be, you know, right there to pick up the kiddos. So I would love to tell you that I was sewing in car circle, but life kept coming up and up and up. So really, 
This hand sewing it happened here and there and everywhere. So we are on to the end of the week at this point, and we are really close to finishing up this dress. Now that I've got the hand embroidery complete, I can finish up the construction of the dress. To do this, I need to wrap up the collar. Nothing 
<laughs> oh, Henry, are you helping? Uh. All right, good morning. So, today, Henry and Audrey are home from school. It is a teacher work day, and actually, Henry was home from school yesterday. His little hand made it, and I was, I was doing this lace yesterday, and his little hand, I don't know what's going on with my voice. I don't know. It's just been a thing. I'm not sick, but Henry is, <coughs> which is why he was home yesterday, which is why his little hand made it in the way <laughs> he was here for his hand to make it into the video. Blah, blah, blah. Can get those voices out. Get the words out. Not voices. There are so many voices in my head. No, there's not. <laughs> God, this is a hot mess. Why do you guys watch me? Anywho, um, but yeah, Henry and Audrey are home from school today. It is, it is... Coming up on 8 o'clock, Charlie is dropping off the younger two to preschool, and um, I think I'm being summoned to a puzzle. I'm going to try to get as much done as I can today, but um, I don't know. It's just going to be what it is. So after we got that puzzle together... Then I went back to Everly's sweet dress. I'm using Madeira 80 weight thread to, to stitch the gathered edgy lace onto the entredeau. Yes, you can do this by machine and I've got videos that go over that, but it is much more relaxing and it's easier, I think, to do it by hand in my personal humble opinion. So from there, I give that an ironing and this is something new. I am lining the collar even though it has a lace edging around the hem. I already had it cut out and I thought it would be a neat addition to keep things kind of like just laying nice and pretty and just give it a solid finish to the color and you know it also would hide those stitches underneath like the embroidery stitches so I went with it turning under the edges and ironing them down in place. I'm also thinking that some piping would be a nice finish. There's youngsters that watch our videos too. Yeah, and both of the youngsters can get over it. Both of the youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> and both dates. Terrible. <laughs> it's a good little movie, you know? What is that? This congeniality. That? I'm gliding here. And whenever I take a break from sewing, even if it's as little as a month or so, I make so many silly mistakes when I return. Wait, hold on. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Like this one. But thankfully, I caught it quickly, which is not always the case. But yeah, piping should go on top of the collar first, and then that whole assembly should get sewn onto the dress, leaving the bodice lining out of this mix. Once I went around the neckline attaching the collar, then I flipped the lining of the bodice so it was right sides together and sewed everything together. I clipped those curves. I understitched. I ironed all of that down. And I stitched the lining of the collar down. Then I moved on to those sleeves. So I got the idea to add some piping above the lace edging. Have I seen that done before? No. But I'm sure it has been done before, I just don't recall seeing it. But I think it would be a neat way to spice things up. So here goes some white sateen piping on top of Ecru Batiste. I know, living life on the edge here. I'm also guessing on my child's arm circumference, it's really a technical process over here of making a circle-ish figure until it resembles her arm. And then I add some seam allowance back and I cut the piece of pipe into length. <laughs> I know, I'm just a regular old brain surgeon. So from there, I run two rows of gathering stitches on the bottom edge of the sleeve. 
I gather up and I pin one end of the piping to one side of the sleeve and the other end to the other side. And then I adjust the gathers and length until it fits the piping. I run two rows of stitches about eighth of an inch apart to attach the piping. I trim up that seam and finish her off with a zigzag to enclose those raw edges. Last but certainly not least, I run a row of top stitches to keep that seam underneath the sleeve's fabric so it doesn't show underneath the lace. Now we can switch gears to attaching those sleeves. I begin putting two rows of gathering stitches at the top of the sleeve and gathering that up until it fits the arm's eye. And I really, really thought about attaching this with a French seam, but I decided against it since the fabric is on the thicker side and I didn't want a bulky seam situation. So instead, I attached the sleeve using two rows of straight stitches about a quarter of an inch apart, trimmed up that seam, and put a zigzag on top to enclose those raw edges. I used to do this method all the time, and it is much easier than the French seam method, so give it a try if using French seams on a sleeve seems overwhelming to you. Now that the sleeves are sewn in, I join one side of the dress using a French seam, and we are almost done. So wrapping up the week here, let's finish that skirt. So admittedly, I should have done all of this before attaching the skirt, but alas, here we are. Like I said, it's been a while since I've sewn, so I am a bit rusty. Anywho, it's fine. I first start by hemming up the skirt. It's just one thing to get them done and out of the way. And I debated on sewing it by hand or machine, but then I remembered that I'm about to put in some tucks. So I figured by machine would be better. It would carry on the look of all that stitching, you know, be like one cohesive lines of stitching. Hope that makes sense. Oh, I'm crazy. Then I'm playing around with the placement of these tucks. I'm also debating if there should be two or three. I'm kind of leaning towards three. So once I get the placement somewhere where I want them, then I sew those into place and join the other side seam with a French seam. I'm walking around feeling free, thinking about what's happened to me from your life. Up till now, don't know where, don't know how. Lately I've come to realize that I can't see it in your eyes. So oh, it's true, I'm so glad, feel it too. Nothing to hide, falling in love. To me it's perfectly clear. I get that smocking done along with the other bits of hand sewing that's left at this point and voila, it is beginning to look like Christmas, y'all. Check out the other videos in this series. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.